Hello guys and welcome to Pig Daily, episode number 106, where today I get to show you a cheesy as shit build where you kill your opponent in Zerg vs Zerg with a heck of a lot of slow Zergling. So let's dive straight into game. It's going to be a really quick daily that's going straight onto YouTube because I am in China as you guys see this. Assuming you're watching it the second I publish it on YouTube. I am pre-recording a couple of dailies for this week, a couple of short, quick videos, running you guys through some build orders and that sort of stuff, uh, because I'm at WESG in China. Gonna be casting some epic games this week. So this one is a slow Zergling all in. It starts out with some 13 pool pressure. So build one drone, build a spawning pool. You then want to drone up using an extractor trick to drone up to 15 supply. Whoa. Uh, you then want to build an overlord and you want to just save your money and lava. So the moment that pool finishes, you're going to build a queen and six, uh, sorry, six zerglings. We're going to go up to 10 zerglings. And you're going to go across the map and pressure with those as you normally would. Now, what's important is your second overlord. Try not to send that directly towards their overlord. Otherwise, the fact that it's delayed means, for instance, if Scarlet saw an overlord coming out now, she'd go, whoa, that's, that's later than a normal second overlord. Look how far out mine is. Why is yours only here? She would say, oh, it's an early pool. She'd know exactly what was happening and she'd get an early warning. As it is, she's still going to see the first Zerglings, but even a 10 or 15 second extra warning there could help her out um, quite a lot. So you always want to hide that. Um, now, you do want to build a second queen straight away. Notice I did an extractor trick to squeeze that out and then start at the Overlord. That's the way I like to do it. I think that's a really efficient way to do it. So 21 queen using an extractor trick to get out there, then the Overlord. Now, your Zerglings are going to be hitting at this point, but let's go back just a couple of seconds because there's a very important point that you guys need to pay attention to, which is this queen. Notice the moment she injected... Whoa. She's actually been given a... Um, whoa. There we go. She's been given a move command to outfront the natural and then attack back towards the hatchery. And this means even while I'm busy microing, she is automatically going to kill this Overlord. Now, I do glance back here and just kind of A-move her because I see the Overlord's flown in really deep. But this is very important. Now, meanwhile, on the front, you want to target down this hatchery. If you're someone who likes to, you know, be a bit crazy aggressive, maybe you want to dive into the main base and try and fight there. Maybe that works at your level. If a lot of your opponents on ladder don't really micro their drones too well. Um, what I find works the most consistently, though, is going for this natural hatchery. And notice I'm forcing him down to this low ground where I could take good fights. Usually, once the queen's here, it gets pretty awkward. Um... Yeah, once that queen gets down here, it gets very, very awkward. So Scarlet went pool first. Keep in mind, that's why I didn't do as much damage this game um, because she's just done a, well, not the safest opening. She didn't, she didn't, she only built two Zerglings. Um, if someone builds like six or eight Zerglings, you're not going to get a lot done. These 10 Zerglings, you just kind of try to take a good fight. If you can, try to be annoying. If you don't get the opportunity to have a good fight, it's important to try and pull them back and keep them alive. Notice I've hidden them down here. So let's go back and look at that actually. So check this out. You want to be really aware of Overlord Vision. So I'm very aware of where Scarlet can see right now. So I notice, notice how I run to the right and then immediately curve downwards because I know I'm out of Overlord Vision. So as far as Scarlet knows, my Zerglings have just gone home. She has no idea where they are. I'm going to hide them down here and this gives them the potential to counterattack, to distract her later, to be annoying. Um, just to get some sort of damage done. Also, say she floods across the map with speedlings right now, they can kind of run in and just be annoying and intercept and, and slow her down. Maybe she'll turn her speedlings around and come home. Um, back at home, all you've been doing this whole time is zero droning. There is literally no droning after you, you put your um, you build that first overlord. So I've rallied the, the rest of the zerglings just to hide here. And then my first two queens, once they've dumped some uh, energy into injects, they're going to come out and start sniping overlords, and they're going to A-move all the way across the map to the base. Now, the reason you saw me dancing these queens back and forwards, doing a little jig like they did, is because I wanted Scarlet to have vision of the queens turning around to give off the idea that they're about to go home. So watch this from her vision. Check that. You'll notice she gets vision for an extra full second after the unit dies. It looked like the queens turned around. However, she actually caught vision of them turning back the other way. So that's a misjudgment by me. You'll notice that, yeah, she actually... Um, let me show that one more time. So I've got this on Scarlet's vision, right, guys? I actually misjudged this. This is really cute. I didn't even realize this, this is what happened. But look at that. She's going to see him turn around. And did she notice that? Probably not. 
but uh, I probably should have kept them walking backwards for about half a second more just to be safe. Now Scarlet, as it is, you know, she's only going to get vision of them now if she was holding the Watchtower, but fortunately for me, she even pulls off the Watchtower with these Zerglings. Um, and she's actually like hunting because she knows I still have Zerglings out on the map somewhere. Smart for her because these Zerglings were coming in specifically to try and distract her and pull her home. At the same time though, all my Zerglings flooding out across the map and she's only going to get warning of it right now. And behind this non-stop Zergling production, usually right around the time you get to their base, you can choose to go back into drones and then try to do a very slow sort of standard gasless transition into roaches. But um, you're pretty all in. You've got to do a lot of damage here. If you don't severely cripple their, um, their economy, you're not going to have a good time. Notice how I'm targeting the hatchery uh, because I don't have enough surface area to fight her units, so I'm forcing her to come and engage me or else that hatchery is going to go down. But I don't want to actually kill the hatchery. Notice I, I keep microing my Zerglings off it at the last second because I don't want Broodlings to join the battle. Um, Broodlings do it really well toe-to-toe -to -toe against slow Zerglings. So uh, just going to be coming in. Those queens have finally arrived. Going to dive into that main base. Scarlet knows she just doesn't have enough units. She's way too outnumbered. Remember, slow Zerglings hit just as hard as your fast Zerglings. They still do the same damage. It's just... They take longer to get into, into melee. But once they're on top of the enemy units, poof, man, they have a party. So, um, of course, this is a bit of a, a humble brag replay. Where it's like, oh, I took a map off Scarlet. Whoa. Um, she was very tired at the time. So probably, I don't know if this would really work very often against the tip top players in Code S. But for you guys on ladder, um, I definitely think you could, you could pull this out quite a bit. Um, hopefully not too many Zergs will be bitter and salty about me showing this build. Uh, I know the first time I died to it, I just laughed. I was like, what did I just die to? Like, this is hilarious. This is some, some ridiculous um, build. Shout out to Jon Snow. Uh, he was the first one who did it to me on ladder. He said Vortex did it to him because um, I asked him about it immediately. I was like, what is this build? Tell me how this works. Um, I changed it up a little bit and kind of developed it myself, but this is really strong on any small maps. Habitation station uh, at the moment, um, I haven't actually looked at the new map pool too closely. Any ones that have short to medium rush distance, the shorter, the better. The number one thing here is to think about your opponent's vision. And this is a really important thing in Zerg vs Zerg in general. Throughout this whole game, I was denying the Overlord outside my base, number one. That's the most important Overlord in Zerg vs Zerg. I then was also, when I pulled back my Zerglings, I was running around the Overlord vision and hiding them for later use so that I could keep distracting, keep Scarlet on the back foot, keep your opponent on the back foot, um, and stop them from getting over to your side of the map and scouting the fact that you've got no drones on your natural um, and, and all that sort of shit. So yeah, it's a good all in. Have fun with it, guys. Uh, enjoy. Don't forget to hug a watermelon, kick a walrus, and of course, punch a garden gnome to the moon. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye and good night. Whoa, I just knocked my mic.